Hey everybody, it's Carolyn from Crop Candy Scrapbooking and the Scrapbook School. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to customize a scrapbook layout. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have recently released uh, some scrapbooking kits that you can use with your Cricut or Silhouette cutting machines. There are pre-designed scrapbook layouts as SVG files, and then I give you a bunch of other SVGs and PNG files that you can use to customize your layout. So uh, one of the most recent kits that came out was the fall into autumn kit, and that has three different layouts in it. And today I'm going to show you how you can use different elements from the kit to customize the layout. So let's take a look at the pumpkin spice uh, layout. It's pumpkin season. So this was one of the first, there's a video of me making this layout, but I want to show, I'm going to actually redo this layout. So this is a, a file that was uploaded into Cricut Design Space and pretty much all you have to do is cut this puppy out and put it together. All of these elements on the page, sans the pictures, are part of the scrapbook kit. These print and cut elements here, the um, this little scalloped square, everything. The, the title up here, all of this is uh, part of one element and that you can get in the kit. Now, suppose you're looking at this and you're like, that's all cute and wonderful, but I don't want to do the layout like that. I want to do my own colors, my own um, approach. I don't want it to be about pumpkins. I want to change it around. Can I do that? Well, certainly, because all I've given you basically is the template, right? So you can design it however you like. So I'm going to show you in Cricut Design Space how I have redesigned this layout and then we're actually going to make the layout. So here we have the original SVG file that you get with my Fall into Autumn kit. Here's everything. Of course, you add the other elements as you want and here are where the photos were. On this side is my redo of the layout. So it has nothing to do with pumpkins. There's still a fall theme, but we're in fall, so I've got fall on my mind, but I certainly don't have to use fall. Um, I've changed the color scheme by going into the layers panel and changing the different colors. Um, there are print then cut elements on this uh, layout. as And I think that this is cut out, the, the title block over here is cut out. I've only included one print then cut element, this label here. The title is already pre-made. This is a maple leaf cutout with Hello Fall um, in it. And then I've left these items over here in their original SVG state. Um, and then I am using the photo frame project. So if you get the kit, I link to a couple of different projects that are pre-made within Design Space that are using elements from the kit. And there is a photo frame project that you can make. And so I decided to add the photo frame, just basically copied from that project over into this project. And I'm going to use the photo frame element and make it a, a family uh, picture layout. So that's what I've done. And you can see it's completely different. I mean, some of the basic elements are the same, the scallop square, of course, but I've changed the theme completely so that I can reuse. So you can see how you can reuse this template for more than one thing. You're not beholden to just doing a pumpkin layout. Here's the kit that I used for remaking this project. This is from Basic Gray. I don't even know if Basic Gray still makes scrapbooking stuff. Um, this is their Indian Summer, probably politically incorrect, uh, title. <laughs> Indian Summer Collection Pack. Um, this had all that you see in here, st some stickers. These are different pattern papers and you get some letter stickers. And then um, I actually bought this at a Creating Keepsakes convention in Pennsylvania many, many years ago. Because let's see, what's the copyright on this kit? It's 2009. 
So, <laughs> and so they were uh, selling these kits and then this basil cardstock that coordinated with the kit. And that comes in different colors. So you'll see that. Um, and then just to show you, here are some of the different patterns. You can see I've already cut out some of the stuff. Um, these are some of the papers that I'm... Beautiful fall kit. These are some of the papers that I'm going to be using within the kit. Here's the sticker sheet. I used one sticker from this a long time ago. Let's crack open... Sorry for all the creakly noises. You get two of these. I didn't realize that. You got two sticker sheets. Here are the letters and here are the patterns. Kind of wild, but I like it. I love the color scheme. Pink is not necessarily something I think about with fall, but you know, it's a shade of berry, so I think it works or burgundy. I mean, beautiful paper, never used it. So I thought, hey, why not use it for my redo of this project? So let me show you, these are the materials we're gonna use. Here's the photo. I don't know these people, this is from Canva. These are my die cuts. I usually like to keep my die cuts in a little separate packet because I tend to lose pieces <laughs> of cuts for some stupid reason. But these are the cuts. Actually, let's show you what they look like there. These are the different cuts. Here's the PNG file. That's a label. And then I've got my acorn and oak leaf. And uh, this is my maple leaf. Here is my frame. So for the frame, you need a base. And I, I use the slice function to create that. This is the thing that's saved um, in the project guide. So I give you a link and you, you um, can make this. At first I was going to show you how to, but I said, let me just pre-make it and then just link to the project and you don't even have to worry about um, doing the slice stuff. So that's going to be my photo frame. I've got another little leaf. And then here are the papers I'm going to use. So this is basil textured. For some reason I got a little dimple there. And what's cool is that there's different types of textures on this, so that, that works out well. Here's my scallop square. And then for embellishments, because there's already the, the uh, SVG cuts are pretty much embellishing the page, I'm just going to use these little pearls um, as just extra highlights because you don't really, you don't, you're not going to need a lot of that to do this project. All right, so I've got my base here. And then I'm going to add this. Now in the original file, I think I had this kind of off center. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to make everything centered here. Some other things you can do to jazz up this page, you can ink the edges, like if you want it sort of like a distress look. You could ink the edges. You could use a distress tool to um, actually let's do that. You know I'm famous for pulling things off my page after I've glued it down. <laughs> do you do that? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to use this distress tool. Now I actually have a video that I made years ago on using a distress tool. This distress tool is, sorry, is from Close to My Heart. I use a lot of Close to My Heart tools and materials because I used to be a consultant, so I still have a lot 
in my stash and they're pretty good company so why I'm not a consultant anymore well it's hard to sell their stuff <laughs> you gotta it's like stamping up and all the other demonstration stuff you really gotta be that person and who likes to do that kind of selling and I actually did two tours of duty with close to my heart the first tour of duty was like 2008 and I have a funny story with that um, my upline my uplines upline got ding me she contacted my upline and told me to cease and desist with doing videos and social media now this was 2008 and at that time close to my heart did not have a social media policy like nobody was really doing Twitter and YouTube I'm just getting rid of the fuzz that's the background you hear so I just added a little distressing around with this little doodad tool I'll link to a video of how to use that below but anyway so nobody was really using social media at that time and you know I was on Twitter and you know because I was like in my day job I use social media to for marketing I was in a marketing um, department for an organization and we were I had set up the social media accounts for that marketing department and I was on the web team so I was all into social media so I was like why not use social media to help promote my close to my heart business and they were like no you will not <laughs> I'm gonna use foam squares to lift this element off of the page as I continue to tell my story so so they they were like no and I was pissed I will tell you I was so hopping mad because you know where I live I'm not going to disclose but where I live it's just not an area where people are into the home parties and when you do close my heart and stamping up at least back then you know the emphasis was on home gatherings like you know the old Tupperware Mary Kay you know home gathering Avon home gatherings home gatherings home gatherings where I live people don't have time for home gatherings they're like eh, I don't really want to do that so you know at the time I was like well the best way for me to reach people would be online because they had you could buy product from me online I think they had started the online purchasing around that time so I was like I'll just link to my store you know I'll show projects I'll do videos where I show nope they were like no 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 so I was like you know what I'm not selling anything I'm not gonna make any money my upline isn't gonna make any money and my uplines upline isn't gonna make any money yeah I was petty McBetty and so I stopped and just kind of let it lapse being a demonstrator and then they said hey we have a social media policy now and it's so funny the person that put out the social media policy was the person that um the uplines upline she was so gleeful oh we have this and da, 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 da. no apology do I sound bitter about this? I haven't really talked about this in so long, and I guess I still bitter about it. But anyway, <laughs> no apology. Like, oh, we made a mistake. I mean, because she really reamed me, and um, nothing. I was like, really? But I was like, I'm glad you all came to your senses. So that is. After that, I started doing videos, more videos. I'm just putting um, these elements down where they're supposed to go on the page before I glue them down. 
Just want to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, so I was glad they came to their senses. Like, you know, get with the program. Um, but anyway, so after that, I can't even remember what the whole point of this story was. Oh, I think it's because I was talking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was talking about how um, back in the day, why I have so many close to my heart products. And that's because, you know, I've used them for freaking ever. I mean, I love their products and I'm not mad at the company, but I was mad at them back then. I was like, I cannot believe that you're basically preventing people from selling in a different way as opposed to the home party stuff. So anyway, I did okay as a close mark consultant and that was my first tour duty. And then I had a day job where I couldn't do it anymore. That same job where I was doing the marketing and stuff. I couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. So, um, I had to stop doing videos for a while and I stopped doing close to my heart for a while. And then I picked it back up in like 2021 because I had quit my job and was looking for something to do. Well, I figured out what I really wanted to do. And that was that. So I amassed some more Close to My Heart materials. So, you know, it's a good company. I just find it difficult or, I, you know, it's just harder for me. And you would think now with everything online, I just, it's just hard for me to sell it. So, and plus I kind of wanted to go in a different direction. I wanted to use other people's materials. Um, and I wanted to start offering these digital products to help people scrapbook because that's the thing is people do not feel like they can do it and I'm trying to make it so like yeah you can do it it's not hard so that is kind of the reason why I started doing these SVG templates because I know a lot of you have Cricut machines and um, I'm surprised at how many of you have not <laughs> taken them out of the box <laughs> and I'm not gonna um and it, you know I get it because I think you've heard me mention that I just got a silhouette cameo four. And of course, like as soon as I get the silhouette cameo four, the next week, the cameo five comes out. It's like, okay. Um, and I let it sit in the box because it's like, I don't know how to use this thing. And I know, you know, it's basically the same thing as a cricket but their software for um, Silhouette Design Space was really intimidating. So I learned enough to be able to do test cuts with it so I can, you know, say, yeah, this stuff works with a, a Cricut machine. Or I'm sorry, my kits work on a Silhouette machine. So I did it. So I, I, was, I made a test cut, and then I just a couple of test cuts, and then I was like, yeah, I, I'm totally intimidated. So I, it kind of reminded me, it's like, well, this is probably how people who get their cricket machines feel like it's just, it's overwhelming. So I'm going to try to be, I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to try to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a series of videos over the next couple of months. I'm even thinking about doing like a class and you guys can let me know in the comments if it's something you would be interested in and what kinds of stuff you want to learn because I I want to do more videos I want to do more lives um, more training stuff but I want to make sure that I'm serving you all with what you want to know but my point is I ramble I try not to ramble but got it I, I have a tendency to ramble so I apologize for that um because I don't have a script so I'm just talking um, so I lost my train of thought again. What I'm trying to say is I got it like just 
trying to figure out how to use silhouette reminded me of how people would feel about using a Cricut machine and when you're new and you have no idea what to do. And um, I was like, yeah, totally get it. So I want to be able to do, I'm going to ink the edges of this lightly with some ink, chalk ink. I think I need to load this a little bit more. I'm using these. Versamark chalk ink. So yeah, it's in, it's intimidating. You just I you know I totally got it because <laughs> it had been so long since I'd been a new cutting machine user, and I've used Cricut for many years before there was Cricut Design Space, and they had something called Gypsy, and then before that you had all of the controls were like on the machine itself, and. It may have probably been a little bit easier to use, but I've kind of grown with Cricut. So I kind of already understand a lot of the different techniques and concepts. But if you're brand new to it, you don't know any, you don't know what all the different things are. It's, it's how I felt with Silhouette. I'm like, I, I don't understand all of these different concepts that you all are talking about. And I feel really lost. So I... I'm trying to make it so that try to help people not feel lost. Um, so I want to know like what things you want to learn. Now I'm going to do it in the context of scrapbooking because that's what I do most of the time. And that's what I know. I, you know, am not a vinyl person. I have done those projects, but that's not my bailiwick. And frankly, there's a lot of videos <laughs> on YouTube that will show you how to do that stuff. Sublimation, blah, blah, blah. Um, but my focus is using your Cricut for paper crafts. And there's so much you can do. And there's so much that I myself want to experiment with and share with you guys and I want to do better on my channel and be more helpful so so that between that and the kits um, hopefully I can help people explore their creativity and scrapbook and if we go back to my videos from the beginning of 2023 where it was like how to scrapbook more in 2023 which is really just how to scrapbook more period doesn't matter what year it is you know I'm trying to do stuff that'll help you do that and the kits are one way that can help you and if you're new to my videos I do I am a simple scrapbooker. Um, I don't do a lot of like heavy embellishments. Um, I do some layering, but I just try to keep it relatively simple because I don't, you know, I'm a busy person. You're, you know, a lot of you out there are very busy. And so, just making time to scrapbook um, is hard. And so you're looking for ways to do it quickly and easily, but it still looks good. So that's kind of my approach to scrapbooking and trying to make it accessible for new people because new people come in and they look at it and they're like, oh my God, I can't do that. And sometimes I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, I can't do that. Um, So that's kind of where my mind is. That's my approach. That's my little mission. So I'm not going to do any journaling on here. I'm just going to show you that this is where the journaling would go over here. And I would, 
I'm probably going to foam tape this too. The foam um, I'm using, I'm really into this. This is new. Um, these are new to me. These are from ThermoWeb. I found this at Michael's 3D Foam Squares. They come on a roll, so you just pull them out as you need them. They are low profile. You can see how low they are, but you can stack them if you want them to be a higher profile. They also come in white. So I use them interchangeably. Of course, if it's something like if it's actually no, I have no rhyme or reason, but I would say use the black ones if you are doing a project where you know where the white would be too stark. So here we go. So that's where I put my journaling. Of course, I would write on it first and then glue it down. You can um, use your hand. If you don't like your hand, you can do have Cricut do the journaling for you. You would type your information into Cricut using their fonts and text and then do an attach the text on here. And then um, Cricut will do two functions. It'll do a print and cut and do the writing in on this particular thing. And I actually have a video about how to do that and I will link to that. So the final, well not the final, we're going to do this um, cluster here and then we're going to add just a few embellishments. Like all of the elements on here are from my fall into autumn kit. These little leaves and berries and doodads and all that stuff. That is there. Okay, so that's how that arrangement cluster is going to go. That's the layout, guys. <laughs> now, I want to do a couple of other things. I'm going to use this sticker sheet. So this is what I mean by you can use elements, you can use my elements and mix them up with anything you already have. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, every, I, I, I thought about how someone could still use their own stuff, but also use my stuff at the same time. And so that's kind of what this whole video is about, is just helping you to visualize um, how you can customize things if you want to. Because some people don't want to do that. They're like, you know what? You designed it for me. It's pre-designed. I don't have to think about it. I'm good. I'll just do what you did. And other people are like, oh, I want a little bit more flexibility. I don't want to do exactly what you did because I don't like it or... <laughs> It's nice, but I don't want to do it. So that's that's the point of this exercise. And I'm what I'm doing is this border sticker has little pieces that need to be removed from it. So just trying to do that. Um, in the original layout, we had a border strip and on this layout, I forgot that we had it. So um, I think it's, I'm gonna have to move some elements around cause that's what I do. I am famous for, oh, glued it down. Oh, don't like it, lift it up. Famous for that, do that all the time. Um, so you gotta use removable adhesive. That's my recommendation. I like Hermafix. Full disclosure, this is not removable. This is permanent. It's Tombow, but uh, it's actually, it's pretty forgiving. So that's, I, I used to use Hermafix all the time. And then you couldn't find it, or I couldn't find it. But now I can get it on Amazon, like in, like a pack of 20 or something. So um, 
I like it a lot. It's kind of gummy. It can get gummy, but I can pick stuff up and lift it off. So if you're one of those people, I'm trying to get the foam adhesive off. That's what you're seeing off camera. If you're one of those people that like have a tendency to lift stuff off the page, like me, then I highly suggest you use a removable adhesive so that you don't make a mistake and cry and mess up your layout. Okay, now we can put our journaling back where we had it. Ta-da! All right. Now I'm gonna add a few more stickers from this sheet. I like this bird. And I, where do I want them over here? I don't know where I want them yet. Maybe over here. I kind of like them in the top of the, all right, so I'm going to figure out some things offline and then I'll come back and I'll show you the final version and then we'll do the compare. All right, so this is the finished layout. Just go over a couple of things with you. Um, so what I did was used some stickers from that sticker sheet I showed you and added them as additional embellishments and layering accents. So let's look up here. This little circle is a, a sticker and then I just added a little pearl dot to this and this here. Uh, this cardinal is a sticker. I lifted him, up, lifted him up with foam tape and added a little pearl dot for his eye. Added a couple pearls here. I just love pearls. I just think they're they just add a nice touch. And I like the, the sparkle gems too. Um, sprinkled more little gems on this page. And, and here within this like layered embellishment cluster, added more round stickers from that sticker sheet, lifted this up, one up with foam tape. And I found another leaf sticker uh, that's patterned, which I thought would work really nicely with um, my SVG cuts in this cluster over here. So that's pretty much the layout. Let's do the side-by-side -side comparison, shall we? So this was the original template that you can find with my uh, Fall into Autumn kit, this one on the left. This was pumpkin season. This is a pumpkin spice latte themed layout. This is the same template as this. I just changed up the theme using other items from my kit. Uh, this photo frame, the fall, Hello Fall title maple leaf here, um, and this basic uh, base page part of the template. You can see some of the elements are similar. But just by changing a couple of things, oh, and the, the SVG cuts over here with the leaves and the acorn. Uh, so you can see just by changing up the color scheme, um, using a different paper packet, and just changing like the amount of photos going from three to one, it's the same layout. I just customized it differently. So you can see how flexible uh, my kits are. I try to make it so that you can do um, whatever you want to do. You don't have to follow the template exactly if you don't want to. So that's that. That's pretty cool, I think. This is uh, something that's really neat to do, and I encourage you to try it. So how do we get the kit? It's available at www.thescrapbookschool.com. All of my kits are there. I'm going to be adding more monthly. They're all going to have the same approach where you're going to be able to customize and do whatever you want with them or use them as is. If you have any comments about this uh, layout, this approach, um, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave me a comment in the box below. 
I uh, appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up or a like. Um, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to grow my channel and uh, I appreciate everybody who's uh, decided to subscribe to the channel so far and I hope I get more subscribers and I hope to do more videos that will help you uh, make time to scrapbook that will make scrapbooking easier and more fun and relaxing for you. Um, so if you'd like to see more of that, please let me know in the comments, what are you looking to learn? What would you like to see me do? I always respond to comments and I like hearing from everybody out there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And as always, happy scrapping.